Our second readings for today will be Romans verse 1 and Romans 7, Romans 2 verse 1 and Romans 7 verse 14 through 25. You therefore have no excuse, you who pass judgment on someone else, for at whatever point you judge the other, you are condemning yourself, because you who pass judgment do the same things. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus the Christ our Lord. So then, I myself in mind am a slave to God's law, but in the sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. I am not too short to use that, but I'm not going to. <laughs> awesome like that. So, I really like those, those verses there because they really give you a sense of, thank you, Mrs. Hansen. Much appreciated. So, I really like those verses because they really, they really challenge someone after you've gotten through all the crazy inverted logic and st sentence structures that remind you of, you know, college English class or high school English class sometimes. Because it challenges me and I think it challenges all of us to think about why we do things sometimes. You know, is it we who are truly in control of our lives or is it something else that's working in us? Be it sin, be it pressure, be it anything that's just not truly us who wants to be doing this, who's, who's just doing something because we feel like we have to instead of we feel, because we feel like we want to. And one of the most important things to me is that whenever I do anything in my life, I really honestly want to feel like I'm the one who's doing it. Like I'm doing it because I really feel I want to and not because I feel I should. So, I think control is a very important thing to us, and all of us, to some degree, feel uncomfortable or anxious when we feel like we're not in control of our own lives. When we feel like there's something else that is making us do things we may or may not even want to do. We feel it when we don't know what we're going to do with our lives after graduation. We feel it when we have feelings of unrequited love. We feel it when we're unemployed, and we feel it when we have to choose between paths without the option of a do-over or a mulligan. I get frustrated when I let my, when I let myself, when I see myself taking the easy way out. Uh, as hard as I try, sometimes when I see a, a homeless man on a corner, I will cross the street. And as hard as I try, even when I want to say something to someone that's really important, I will let, I will let my fear get the best of me and tell me no. Don't, and I'll be silent. Control over my life is important to me because I'm making decisions and the consequences, both good and bad, I can really call my own. I can say that I'm the one living my life and not something else living for me. It's exactly for this reason that I dislike identities, as we mentioned in the, we mentioned identities earlier in the call to worship. Labeling oneself as something has the liberating effect that one can assign what values one will to that identity. But ultimately, labels are a double-edged sword. 
and they limit how you can think about yourself and how you can think about others. My friends cannot simply be themselves. They can only be a combination of old, young, straight, gay, black, white, brown, or handicapped, among other things. And the same goes for me. I'm not just Adam to some people. I'm some combination of straight, white, male, middle class, energetic, mathematician, musician, etc. And I don't think that's fair. Because God didn't make a bunch of classes and then decide, okay, there's going to be six something billion people on the planet, and I'm just going to see this massive combinatorics exercise where I assign as many different combinations of these things as I can to different people and just see how it works. You know, tinkering with the toy box experiment. No, he made a bunch of individuals, a bunch of people who are nothing more and nothing less, for sure, than they themselves, a bunch of people who matter because of who they are innately which has no words to describe really what that is. And I think treating people on an individual basis is the only way to follow the command of judge not lest you be judged. Because applying labels forces everything that goes with that label onto that person, the good and the bad alike. I think it's the same with marriage. With labels for people, you end up looking for someone who is perfect, so to speak. Someone who's everything you dreamed of and nothing you didn't, who has all the good labels and is expected to always be able to live up to them as any long, happily married couple should be able to tell you, I think. Your spouse is a special and unique person who always turns out to be more and less, so to speak, than one expects. Someone one can love not in spite of, but because of the particular eccentricities that some people try and call flaws. I think this is a great thing, because it's completely absurd to expect a spouse to be perfect, because then you have to expect yourself to be perfect as well, and none of us are perfect. We all have deep flaws and things we'd be ashamed to talk of in the open. It's the same with all parts of life. We cannot expect perfection when we ourselves are not perfect. It's from that knowledge, that understanding and patience can grow and help us all to come to peace with the parts of our daily lives which are beyond our control. By letting people just be themselves, we allow them to have control over their lives, to choose what they will be, which gives us the right to ask for the same in return. And I know being oneself is a difficult, difficult task at times. But I believe that it is a worthwhile way to live. Because I believe in the message of love that we have from God. A message that will always triumph over a message of fear. Because I know that God is with me. I have the courage to not live in fear. Fear of what others may judge of me. Fear of failure. Fear of the unknown. I refuse to bow to fear. And I defy fear. I defy fear. I defy all the unknown. And I defy life itself because I know that God is with me, and with him I can overcome anything. And I believe he is with all of us, that he is there and his love for us, he supports all that we do, and nothing, not the unknown future, nor social awkwardness, or anything else will take control of my life from me, because I refuse to allow it. I won't let my fear control me, even when everything seems to be against me. And none of you have to yield either. None of us have to put up with that, because we are the children of God Almighty the one who can do anything. Against God, nothing can stand. He believes in us and supports us all. No matter what we think sometimes, he is there with us. Life cannot take that away from us, nor nothing in it. We have the power to seize our destinies, our dreams, with our own hands, to burn with fire and passion for what we love and stand stalwart and true. We can stand and say, unafraid to that fire within us, oh, ignoble conflagration, incinerate all. And so I say, let our fires burn and our lights shine. Shine on, light of ages, within all of us. Shine on a bright future for all of us, a future which, whether we believe it or not, is in our control.